we're back on the Pontiac again today. And I need to start attaching the Pontiac to the Miata. So I needed a close-out panel. It kind of closes this all out and adds structure because this is where the fender is bolt on. So I made up a couple little pieces, one for each side, just did one and duplicated it on the other side. So that gives us structure there. And then I took a little piece of 20 gauge, it's only had was 48 inches long, and then just put it on this top surface. So the Miata firewall comes up and then wraps over. So what I think we're going to do is make another one. I don't know if we're going to put it this way or this way. <clears throat> we'll cut a piece about 43 inches, put a lip at the top, and then we'll slide it in there, inscribe the surface, and then we'll just go ahead and tack weld that on for now. Just see how things work. So it took me a little piece of 20 gauge, about, I think it's two inches this way, and I just put a three quarter inch lip on it. And I clamped it up in there, you might not be able to see it, but I kind of scribed it to the other flat piece, this piece here. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> does not quite go to the line, but be a little bit off the line so I can do some fine tuning, and we'll cut that out and keep test fitting it until we fit. And when it fits, I will show you then. Well, I got that all tacked together. Got to re-tack this end, missed them a little bit, but uh, yeah, that works. You can see on each end, it's thicker, narrows down in the middle, of course thicker on the sides. So it's about two inches here on each side. And the car is a little off, but we'll adjust that. When I put this in the car, like that, I'm within a tenth of a degree across the top. So we are going to be happy with that. So we'll trim this up a little bit on the edge and see what we do next. So we got the new piece clamped in place. Decided to run this on the outside so it sticks out a little bit because if we put the latch in there for the hood so it swings to the front, we need as much room as possible. So you can see we're within a tenth Maybe, maybe not. There you go. We're within a tenth. Um, one thing I'm noticing is as we're sitting down a little bit on this side, and where the tag is, we're sitting a little bit up. So we have height on each side. So we'll research that next, but I think you can see it's actually sitting down a little bit. So I'll put something in there to space that up for a minute, and we'll see what to do next. So the next thing I'm working on is how to close this out from the panel we just put in. Support this, because this is of course where the fender bolt's on. You can see the two bolts there. So you want some structure this way. So I built this little close out with a nice little radius that happened to be the exact size of the tape roll. Close that in. Still can get to everything for the wiper unit. And then it can weld here. We can weld a close out in here somehow. I don't know how to do that yet. Just mocking it up. And then from here up will be where the fender bolts on. So I'll have a plate just like this one over here. We'll have a plate that bolts on here. I'll make a vertical plate, cut it to fit the fender, and then put a top plate on so that you can bolt through. At least that's the concept, but uh, yeah, got this all fitted so we could just weld along the edge there, grind that in, and of course we'll put a top plate on here to, to close this all out once we figure out what we're doing, but uh, yeah, decent progress. Well, we got the passenger side all mocked up, yeah, I'll fill in that hole there, and I got the top capped off. And both sides capped off, so when we get it all done, we can weld it there on that joint. Weld it down here. It's 
tight to the bottom. Feather that in there. So yeah, it all fits along here. So we'll just tap that in and weld that and make a nice round joint. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that concept. And then what I'll probably do is run this bottom plate up to here. And I might cap this off, give me something to weld to, add some more strength in there. I haven't decided yet, so we're going to leave that open a little bit long, and then we'll figure out what we're doing on this part. So, now we got to go to that side. So as you can see, i got the front end back on and mocked up. We'll put some posts in that I can adjust, so no, it's not the final spot. It's just for rough cal calculations and guesstimations. So what I've done is i got a 1 inch piece of 16 gauge wide, 30 some inches long. Yes, it overhangs. But that's butted up against that curved piece base. And then what I had done was made up these angle pieces with a 2 inch lip on them. And those were going to go, those are going to go in there. But I forgot that this has got a really slight bend in it. You know, it's got some concavity or convexity this way. So I went ahead, cut that lip off, and clamped it to the bottom side of the fender where the mounting holes are going to be. And I'm going to look, the biggest thing is, is the Miata, or the Astro fenders you can say is this way, but the Miata kind of curves in like this. So I'm going to sit in the design chair for a while and figure out the best way to do this. Well, this is what I'm working on now. I made the bottom strip here wider so I can overhang it a little bit. And I cut some panels to fill in between the two. So there's a panel here. It's got a 90 on it, and there's a bottom panel that's flat. What I want to do is just, I'm going to tack this. I've cut it and fit it along the bottom. And I'm going to tack that to this piece so these two are together. And then what we can do is, is we can come back once we get <coughs> excuse me, all the sheet metal finished, everything lined the way we wanted to, make sure everything's square. Um, and I can trace this and then come back and butt weld this piece to that piece. So that's the plan. We will see how it works. And there we have it. We've got this piece, the vertical piece, attached to the bottom. And as you can see, the Klecko Forest has returned on the top. And yeah, they're overlapped right now, but it'll be, we'll probably go in, I think this is 18 gauge. It'll go in 18 gauge width. 40, 50 thousandths, whatever it is, and be probably somewhere in here about an inch down. This word will be welded all the way across when we're done. But uh, that gives us some, some strength there. Of course, none of that stuff was welded to the, to the Miata yet, but uh, got a little bit of flex. But it'll be okay. But yeah, we're making good progress. It's the end of the day, on Tuesday. So now that I figured out how to do this, I guess we'll come back and work on this tomorrow morning. We we'll get the driver's side done and see what other trouble we can get into. So we're back on the Pontiac today. Mr. Bubba is on his way and should be here at any moment. So I was just tackling this little bit here. As you can see, this is all rusted, and this is the Vega closeout for the headlight surrounds and the grill and everything else. And I think this attaches on to the panel, closeout panel in the front. So what I did was just made me up a little piece. It'll go like that. Bent the ends up. So it kind of matches that. We can always grind it down. And then I was just going to mark where those holes are. Oops. I thought I ought to show it to you first. 
We'll mark the holes and cut it out and weld it on. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Get everything all clamped in. And this is nice and level. So yeah, one more piece tacked on and that looks a lot better than the rusted out one. So now that I've got the windshield wiper system pretty much finished, I decided to go ahead and start finalizing the cowl area. So one thing I needed to do is this a piece that sits on top of the Miata firewall. So I needed to finish welding that. So I did what Fitzy does. Tacked it on the outside. I'm not going to finish it like he does. We'll just spray that up really good, cleaned up. Weld it all on the inside. <clears throat> and came and finished welded it all on the outside. So I've got this surface nice and flat. This surface nice and flat. I'll go ahead and knock that corner off. Depends on what we need for the car. But now I need to, of course this is going to warp and everything else, so I'm going to go ahead and refit this to the firewall, and we'll keep moving forward. Well, my concept was good, but it didn't work at all. So I welded it in through here on the bottom, and of course this part shrunk, so it bowed more. Uh, oh, I can just shrink it. Make some cuts in here. Welded this. Of course, it shrunk this way. Now it touches in the middle, not on the edges, and I thought, yep, you just have to cut your losses. So I came up with another design that hopefully will be easier that I've been spending about three, four hours on. So I just took a piece of sheet metal, four, er, 18 gauge, that goes from this edge to that edge and put a brake on it. And what I'm thinking is, is I could just put a piece of sheet metal here. It has existing holes through here that I can just bolt it down and then I can weld it. Hopefully without it bending. Yeah, we're not going to hope much for that. But we'll just spot it for now. But um, yeah, I like that idea so far. Of course everything's bendy. But um, just get it flushed in here. Put a couple screws maybe to hold it in here, and most of the work was just getting it to, as you can see, cut and fit to the original cowl. So I think if we bolt that down or attach it to the cowl here, attach it to the cowl here, the firewall here, it should be nice and strong and be removable. So we'll keep playing with that concept, see how it works, but um, right now I'm happier with it all that matters. Well, we're back at it this morning. So what I've done is somewhat fit this piece to here. A little gap is fine. Get a place for the weld to get down into. And then I used five, um, I think they're like 1024s or 1032s, something like that, through here. And then of course clamp it all the way down, all the way along. And what I'm going to try to do is weld most of this on here so that it'll do a better job, hopefully this time, of keeping the two flat. So that's the plan. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start tacking this in. I've got my air hose. I'll just take my time and hopefully it'll work out good. Well, I'm in the process of tacking. So I did a quick tack all the way across, and then I came back and put in uh, about a quarter inch tack. And what I'm doing is I am hitting it with the air hose every time I make a weld. So I'm finding I can do about a quarter inch weld, and then I come and just hit it with the air hose. So it's laying down really nicely, give me something good to grind on. And, um, before I grind it, I'll flip it over and, and weld it from the back side too, doing the same method. But um, yeah, only welded one screw in so far, so that's a win. But those will come out easy. So I'll continue my slow process of going across, and we'll see how it looks. Well, that turned out quite well. Just took my time and 
like I said, did some quarter inch tacks all the way along. I think I've got two or three little blow holes. You can kind of see one there, which I can take care of on the bench. But uh, yeah, so now that's the bolt that I welded in, which we will take out. But otherwise, really happy with that. Everything stayed nice and straight and flat. So hopefully we won't have too much rework to do. We got all the grinding done. We got the bolt removed. And then I clearanced so that I could get the bolt head in there. I'm just using some 1032 button heads, stainless steel. And yeah, everything fits good. It's a little bowed in the middle, but it's nice because you can just pull it down, put these two bolts in, pull it down. Everything lines up. And then there's just a natural bow a little bit in that cowl anyway. So right now I'm happy with how things are fitting. Just can uh, continue go ahead and fitting it a little bit better and then figure out how to ground it, grind this. So I'll just go back and watch some more of Fitzy's videos and getting in there with a grinder and trying to make this somewhat of a radius. And then I'm sure we'll just probably fill that with a little seam sealer or bond or something to make it look nice, but uh, right now, I'm really happy with it. Well, that turned out quite nice. So I just did what Fitzy says on Fitzy's Fabrication. I just used a old grinding wheel I had. Of course, it gets radiused over. And just went into the corner and ground up and down until I got a nice radius there. Now, I'm not going to worry about all the little pits and stuff. This isn't outside of the car or structural or anything like that. Um, we'll just come back with a little body filler and, and fill that in and take some sandpaper and a dowel pin or something and get that nice. But yeah, that worked out really, really well. Highly recommend Fitzy's Fabrication on YouTube. Um, an, a, an older body man who has a lot of experience and uses minimal tools. So. Happy with that? Let's go to the next thing. Well, I forgot to pick up my camera earlier. But what I've been working on is I wanted a nicer piece. I just made something out of sheet metal just as a concept. And it worked okay. But now that I have this piece up there, I wanted something that I can have a nice radius that blends into where the fender mounts. So I made this, I think it's 60 thousandths. Just kind of measured something up uh, and um, put a three, I think it's a three and a quarter inch radius on it. Kept playing around with this length and then um, made a top piece and just kind of bent it, bent it to conform with the body itself. So yeah, that all looks really good. And I don't know if you can see it, but I did all my welding on the inside all the way around. And that way I think we can just come back with a thin layer of Bondo just to kind that seam. And then you don't have to worry about holes and stuff at the top. So, yeah, pretty happy with that one. And now on the driver's side, as you can see on the passenger side, that one comes right to this rail edge. But on the dri or this side, we have the body identification plate so basically tells you know when it was made and all the options and colors and all that stuff so this I think I can move so I think what I'm going to do is pop these rivets out and that allow me to make that one and this one match up the same well, we're back at it again this morning so yesterday I made that corner piece and did some tidying up around here just to get everything kind of finalized a little bit more mainly this piece I had the vertical welded in there but I just wanted to make some changes so I also found that the lip from here to here is about 3 sixteenths or a quarter inch longer on this side than on th that side which has thrown me off of why this is the same distance side to side and everything measures out but I couldn't figure out why that was hidden and that's because this lips wire so we're going to grind some of that off anyway 
There's things on here you don't need, and just make it a little bit more tidy. So what we're going to do today is start focusing on the radiator. So I put the block back in. I haven't received my water pump yet. Water pump and harmonic balancer should be coming pretty soon. Um, because of the short space, we're going to be using the Corvette um, for an accessories on this. And I have my radiator now from Speedway. So we're going to go ahead and mock this up in here. I think we'll have to move this tube to remove it from the Miata. But that's okay. So we'll um, do a little cleaning up here and we'll start mocking things up. Remove that top support, which is not really structural. I think it was used to hold the hood and, you know, all the ancillary stuff in the front. But the neat thing is, is Mazda designed this for us because the radiator is about three inches thick. And if you look, there's a very nice channel to start our radiator with, radiator support with, and it already has nuts and stuff mounted on it. I'm going to use some of my cribbing and some 2x4s so it's nice and stable, you can do everything hands free. And I have the radiator set in there for the first time. So everything looks really good. Got plenty of room here, easily a finger's width between basically where the mount's going to be in the tank. And I was just eyeing it up a minute ago. The top of the radiator is good with about the top of the heads. So I think that should be fine because what I do is I run the steam bypass lines from the heads down into just drill a hole and put a um, like an eighth inch NPT nipple and just run the steam line right back into the water pump itself. So not a ton of room in these, but um, I think that'll work. Now i got to look at, okay, if my hood opens and we're going to clear the radiator cap, which I ought to get. I've got that sitting in another box, so I'll put the radiator cap on and adjust this height. But, uh, yeah, I think we got room, and I'll go measure some of the other cars and see our distance from the water pump up to the radiator. But uh, looks like we've got plenty of room, but uh, won't know until we get the water pump on, and hopefully that comes today or tomorrow. It's like Mazda planned for us to do this. So I removed this bracket that was on there that I was using to hold the radiator. And we knew those are the two holes that are threaded. And there's actually a stud underneath right here. So those I can use to make a mount. So what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to make a little prototype to kind of make sure these holes are right. Make a prototype for the bottom, slide them up, and get my distances, things like that, and then I'll make a one that comes down like this to support the, the side of the radiator, and then we can do something across the bottom. But yeah, right now, looks really good, so we'll make some prototype pieces and see how things look. So underneath the driver's side front frame rail, so this is where the radiator is going to go. So what I did, I made some prototypes out of 16 gauge on the plasma cutter so that I could get my whole locations right and the distances from front to back and things like that. So now I've made the final prototype out of 16 gauge. So hold on to yourself. So it mounts to those two holes on the frame rail itself. This is going to need a little space up here. I'll figure that out, that out later. This is mounted solid, and that plate underneath is mounted solid. And this is the bottom of the radiator support that goes across. So we've got it three and three quarters wide. The radiator is about three and three eighths at the welds, so that gets some room to put some rubber top and bottom and everything else. 
and it'll it'll sit off because it's only 26 inches wide and this is um, probably got about an inch of clearance on each side so yeah I'm happy with that it clears everything I think once we make it in uh, eighth inch I always use uh, you know some scrap this is just drops from uh, a previous project so it not cost me anything and I've also got lots of areas I can reuse and recut these for more prototypes but uh, yeah, I'm happy with that so now what I'm going to do is put all these dimensions in the computer um, to get all everything lined up where it's supposed to be and I'll continue with my model and um, start making a prototype out of this in um, eighth inch there we have the first trial fit and everything looks really good holes lined up which I knew they did because of the prototype and I checked to make sure it was square back here so it's like 91 or 89 degrees can't be 91 degrees um, so the next thing I'm going to do is do the piece for the frame mount that comes into this and then uh, we will go from there well, I kept testing pieces and trying pieces and making modifications and I think I've got it so this is everything tacked together it's even got the bottom plate in it all the way up to the sides and it has the frame braces that go across up underneath the frame and the two diagonal gussets on each side and everything fits so I think what I'm going to do now is I've got to make the pieces that fit in here so it's just like a one inch lip that sticks up to keep the radiator from going front to back probably doesn't need it and then I also realized once I get this all welded up I'm going to have to cut a lot of this out but I'll do it after it's welded together so that you can actually get the radiator in here with the um, I think it's the inlet the lower radiator hose so you can get it on but anyway we're happy with that and we're moving forward. I think that'll work. So I put on these places here, kind of ties the bottom into the sides so the radiator can't go forward and backwards, which can't go anyway because we've got, you know, those on the sides there. But uh, yeah, it's all in, it's supporting itself. I've got the, I think it's 11 inches, so it's like 11 or 13, so it's like, I'll have to recheck it, but it's like 7 inches or 8 inches to the, from the block to the nose of the water pump, and then I've got another 3 inches here, so I should have good clearance, and I can move it back and forth about 3 quarters of an inch, so I put left plenty of room in there so we can put um, you know, adhesive backed rubber or foam, whatever we choose to use and then I clearanced here so that the lower neck slides right in so yeah pretty good day and a half worth of work so this is kind of where I am at the moment what I usually do is I want to finish up something major kind of clean up the shop, put up the, the tools. So I'm kind of at a point where I want to hang on a minute. I got some more pieces parts coming. I've got the lower valence coming. The AC condenser is coming. The dampener, which won't matter for this, but the water pump is coming. And I might make a run to one of the pick apart places and look for a radiator fan and shroud so I don't want to get too far ahead usually because then you end up doing extra work because something fits different or anything else but I'm really happy right now how everything is fitting so what I'd probably do um, after I make the or put this video together just do some cleaning up paint some things just to protect it because you can always see surface rust starting it's it's June here in North Carolina and we're going to get some resurfaced rust, so time to stop that in the bud, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy where we're at right now, so I am going to put this video together 
um, it doesn't have a ton of finished stuff but it kind of shows you the progress so until the next one